woke up this morning and the sun was gone. Turned on some music to start my day. Hear that old song they used to play. I begin dreaming. Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. If you keep coming back for more videos, please consider liking and subscribing and ringing the notifications bell so you don't miss anything. Plus, you can join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month. And starting now, that will give you access to exclusive video content as I'm now posting videos of my pen unboxings as I receive them. So you'll get an early preview of upcoming pen reviews along with your cool emojis, stickers, and badges. Those of you that follow me may recall that I recently surpassed 1 million views on my YouTube channel. When I saw that milestone coming up last January, I set out looking for a suitable fountain pen that would mark the occasion. I spent about a month looking and trying to decide whether it was finally time to get a Mont Blanc 149 or 146, or whether a Pelican M1000 or a Sailor 1911 large might be appropriate. Then I saw a post in the Leonardo Facebook group of a pen that absolutely blew my socks off. They're gone. Here's the photo from Doug Vickery of his limited to 100 pieces Dutch Pen Show 2021 Leonardo Officina Italiana Momento Zero Grande Jonathan Brooks Earth, Jonathan Brooks Earth Magic 2. And I had to have one. So I raced over to Applebaum to see if they carried them. I thought that they would, being Dutch and all. There are only two things I can't stand in this world. People who are intolerant of other people's cultures and the Dutch. What? But I had to really search for it, as it wasn't listed in the Leonardo brand category. But after a specific search, I found that they were in stock. I ordered it immediately and I hardly ever even glanced at the price. And now here it is in my hands. Channel members saw me unboxing this amazing pen weeks ago, and I finally calmed down long enough to try to do a fair and balanced review without gushing too much. So join me as I try to contain my excitement as we look at this mouth-watering, grail-worthy fountain pen right now. <laughs> So I was all set up ready to video a review when the doorbell rang and a package has arrived a couple of days early. And this is from DHL and of course I had to pay their extortion fee to get it. Look bud, I said your money or your life. I'm thinking it over. <laughs> so let's open it up. I have another book. I like these. I use them all the time. And a nice big box inside the box. Always so nicely wrapped. So I know what this is. This is my Leonardo Momento Zero Grande. And it's in a special Jonathan Brooks uh, resin, acrylic. That's called Earth Magic 2. It was a special edition, and I just simply had to have it. This pen is in celebration of my one millionth view on my YouTube channel. So here we are, special limited edition. Stilografica La Volta da Bera Piena. Pistone. 1.5 milliliters. Fatto a mano nel affettina Leonardo. E molto pericoloso, signorina. Molto pericoloso. Made by hand in the workshop of Leonardo. Nice big box. This is bigger than any box I've had. That's what she said. That's what she said. That's what she said. Good one. And I had a Momento Zero Grande before. So let's slide the sleeve off and we have a plain 
black box that looks like it opens this way there we go this is special collection some information about Leonardo and their pins some instructions on using the piston and here's the pen as you can see this is from the Dutch pen show limited edition and it's got it's opening. okay are you seeing what I'm seeing folks this is probably the most incredible fountain pen and resin I've ever seen I, it was remarkable in the photos when I first saw the photos and of course it comes with a bottle of ink oh another bottle of blue and that blue ink is fabulous I've used it quite a bit I've got two bottles of it now it has the new sort of uh, a deco hash mark cross hatching pattern band on it that's different than the triple band that we've seen on other Leonardo's and there's the nib and this is my first gold nib from Leonardo this is abroad and it has that wonderful logo on it from the Dutch pen show ebonite feed incredible and they were supposed to get a wrench with it in fact I ordered a wrench with it and Yoast cancelled my order because he said it came with it and there's no sign of the wrench Leonardo Officina Italiana Momento Zio Grande Jonathan Brooks Earth Magic 2 and that is magic all right can't wait to try this out and what I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen show some size comparisons some measurements and then provide a writing sample and after the writing sample please stay tuned as I will talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen we're going to take a moment for a beauty tour here I know that I did that in the unboxing but what Jonathan Brooks has done here is just beyond description and the more we look at it the better here is a photo of Brooks's Earth Magic 1 which was featured in one of David Parker's videos a couple of years ago I remember seeing that acrylic and being amazed by it there was also a video that David did with Jonathan where they mixed up some acrylic resin and cast them into rods in Jonathan's garage I'll link that video in the description because it really is fascinating but Brooks has come a long way since then to say that his business has expanded well that's an understatement it's more like exploded as gorgeous as earth magic one was this earth magic two is just sublime the depth the chatoyance the sparkle not to mention the play between the deep cobalt blue and the rich copper tones I've just never seen anything like it when I posted photos of this on Instagram and showed the unboxing to members I got a few responses from people who felt it was certainly beautiful but might be too ostentatious for use in a business environment under the lights and close up yes it is very very glitzy but this is a fairly dark resin as well and under normal lighting conditions although it still attracts the eye it doesn't actually scream at you like some clown car resins do this Leonardo Ferrore Grande in Smaraldo is much more eye-catching uh, than the Earth Magic 2 and stands out a great deal more overall this is a big pen let's look at it next to a Metropolitan and a Safari for scale you can see that it's much bigger than either of those two pens from the top we see a conical finial and the cap curves up to a large gold center band with a geometric art engraving pattern inspired by art from the Greek civilization between 900 and 700 BC and that's surrounded by two smaller gold bands the roller clip is very nicely springy and usable and rises up out of the cap without a ring 
At the end of the cap, there is a step down to the level of the barrel. This is a really clever little design adjustment by Leonardo, making the transition from the cap uh, to the barrel level. And at the top of the barrel, there is a gold ring. And then the barrel tapers down to another gold ring, which separates the piston knob from the barrel. And we have the matching end conical finial. The center of the barrel has the engraving Leonardo Officina Italiana Dutch Pen Show 2021 exclusive LE 80 of 100. This is number 80 of 100 pieces made. There were 50 made with palladium trim and 50 with gold. The cap unscrews with exactly one turn to reveal a large milk bottle shaped section of the same fabulous acrylic that is framed by a gold band at the top of the barrel and the larger gold band at the top of the section towards the number six size broad 14 karat gold Yovo nib and a Japanese ebonite feed. The step down to the section is smooth as are these cap threads. And this unique section shape might look odd but it is the most comfortable section I've ever used. I love this style and it's on all my mementos and furores as well. Let's get a closer look at this nib. The nib and feed are friction fit and not part of a nib assembly. The nib on the Grandes from Leonardo always looked larger than the number six to me because of how much the nib is showing out of the section. You can see when I put these two together, there's much more of that Grande nib visible above the section where most of that nib is buried below the section on the Momento Zero. And the nib has an engraving of the Dutch Pen Show logo on it, a quill and an ink bottle. Then it says 14K, 585, which is the gold content, and B for broad. Let's look at the ebonite feed for a moment as well. I really love the long, gentle curve of these ebonite feeds. And they hold so much ink, they look like sponges. The section does not unscrew from the barrel. This was supposed to come with a Leonardo wrench for disassembling the piston filling system for cleaning and maintenance, but it wasn't in the box. Applebaum is sending me one with my Waterman Karen order. The inside of the cap shows no cap liner or even a ledge to seal the nib. I'm a bit surprised that the ledge isn't there because every other Leonardo I've owned has that milled into the cap. Perhaps there's a practical reason for that little step at the end of the cap here that meets with the gold band of the barrel. Perhaps that's the nib seal. That makes sense. I've not had any issues with the pen drying out at all. The cap posts deeply and securely. And even though it makes for a very long pen, the cap is so light that the pen is not unbalanced. I tend to write with this pen unposted, but posting is not an issue for me either. Unposted, the pen is plenty long enough in the hand and the pen is just marvelous uh, in its balance and weight and feel in the hand. That section is so comfortable. And this is where I have to admit something. I had a Momento Zero Grande before in the dark Hawaii finish. I never felt quite comfortable with that pen and I sold it. But this pen is exactly the same body shape and I adore it. So tell me, what's wrong with me? The only way I can explain this is this pen just grabs my heart and I feel like I have something special in my hand. I was a bit underwhelmed by the dark Hawaii acrylic. I guess that means that I'm swayed so much by the look of the pen to the point that it affects how it feels in my hand. I think that's fascinating. Does anyone else have that experience? I bought this pen from Applebaum for $605.08 which is after my 15% discount. It was retailing at 711.86 Canadian. You can get a 10% discount from Applebaum by simply entering the word friend when you check out. To get the 15% discount I got, simply review one of your Applebaum purchases and they send you a 15% off code right away. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the Leonardo Memento Zero Grande Earth Magic 2 with a Leonardo Ferrore Grande, Smaraldo, a Ranga 3C in Ebonite, an Opus 88 Bella, 
and a fully when 017 quicksand now let's look at them posted and here they are posted you'll see this fully win 017 uh, quicksand again tomorrow as this is a gift from my pen friend and YouTube colleague from British Columbia doodlebud he gifted me the fully win with a custom ground cursed of italic nib to mark my 1 million views on YouTube a very generous gift indeed and very much appreciated let's also take a look at these pens unposted and here they are unposted I think I'm gonna do this from now on as there are a lot of users that never post their pens and want to see what they look like unposted tomorrow I'm putting up a video showing off this fully win 017 quicksand and its cursive italic nib and I'm going to demonstrate and try to explain the differences between cursive italics and other specialty grinds in a video I'm calling architects italics and stubs oh my mostly lions and tigers and bears lions and tigers and bears now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample And we're back with the writing portion of the review this is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper and this will be the longest title for a pen I think I've ever had to write might run out of ink well here goes this is the Leonardo Officina Italiana Momento Zero Grande Dutch Pen Show twenty twenty one exclusive limited edition. Jonathan Brooks Earth Magic 2.0 and it has a broad 14 karat gold Yovo number six size nib there now we won't need a writing sample let's check the wetness you can probably tell already this is a very very wet pen and it is incredibly smooth and you can probably hear that bit of toothiness feedback it's just marvelous wonderful that's the line variation this 14 karat gold nib is nicely bouncy and you can squeeze some variation out of it it's not a flex nib at all but it's nicely bouncy 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 do you want do you want want do you want, want? Do you want? To come back to my place bouncy bouncy I ordered a broad nib because if it ended up being too broad for me it's big enough for Jack Hernandez to cut it into an architect that's what I did with my Momento Zero Blue Hawaii this was a broad nib that I had Jack cut into a, a an architect for me and it's now one of my favorite nibs in my collection and the ink today is of course Leonardo blue I wish this ink had a sexier name they could remove some of the syllables from the pen itself and add them to the ink because this is a spectacular ink uh, and blue just doesn't cut it as a description it has a terrific shading to it from deep blue to a light teal uh, color and a lovely red sheen it's very similar to Konpeki and really does this earth magic acrylic justice here are some close matches to this ink from inkswatch.com 
So the first five minutes of writing with this pen uh, dispelled all thoughts of cutting it into an architect. Uh, the nib makes a 0 0.7 millimeter thick line, which makes it a western medium to broad and a Japanese broad, if such a thing exists. And for our quote. and some reverse writing. Much drier, much thinner, but very smooth. And it continues to write. Nice. And some quick writing. No issues whatsoever. Very, very wet pen. So what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? I think it's clear that I'm totally in love with this pen. However, I'm going to try to hold back my gushing enthusiasm for it and attempt to be a little bit objective here. Okay, the pen is big. If you have smaller hands, and this pen is big in my medium-sized hands, you might not be comfortable with it, although it's really not heavy at all. The girth of it might be too much for smaller hands. It's a piston filler without an ink window or a removable section with an opaque acrylic body. That might be a non-starter for some because of the difficulty in cleaning it out. There's a wrench you can get to disassemble the piston mechanism for maintenance. The bad news is that the tool is almost $30 US, which is a bit steep for a small flat steel bar in my opinion. $20 bucks US would be more reasonable. If you don't change inks often and continue to keep the pen inked and used, there should be no reason to disassemble this pen. However, if you let the pen dry out with ink in it, well, you'll need the tool, but you really don't deserve to have a pen of this caliber, do you? Look into your heart now, know the truth, and get a Metropolitan instead. Oh, and there's one more negative that I have to report on this gorgeous writing instrument. I had a really strange issue with the nib. I left this issue to last uh, because it's almost resolved now. And it's also why I've held off reviewing the pen as long as I have, because I've been waiting for Leonardo to address it. This gorgeous laser engraving of the Dutch Pen Show logo seems to have been laser engraved a bit too deeply because, look at this, it sheds ink through the nib. I discovered it by seeing some ink on the top of the nib, which isn't unusual in itself, but when I swabbed it away with a tissue, or like this with a Q-tip, it keeps welling up. I've never seen anything like this. I took photos of it and sent them to Salvatore Matrone, asking him about the issue. He said that he would replace the nib and asked that I return the faulty nib after I was satisfied with the replacement. That was well over a month ago, and Salvatore informed me just last week that the new nib would be on the way this week. I haven't seen it yet, but I know that Salvatore will make it right. This isn't an issue for this model, as only the limited edition has this engraving on the nib, so the issue should be limited to only 100 pieces. And perhaps this is the only one of 100 that have that issue. Well, lucky me. You gotta ask yourself one question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? Oh, Mr. Harry, you're really not going to like what I have to say. And all of that out of the way, this is the most beautiful fountain pen I own. It's not only beautiful, it writes like a dream, the nib issue notwithstanding. I write in my journal every night, mostly to help me remember what I did yesterday, but also to use a different pen and a different ink every day. My journal for the last month is written in Leonardo Blue in bold lines from this pen, page after page. I just can't stop writing with it. It thrills me to hold it, to look at it, to feel it, and to feel it move ink in beautiful lines on the page. As my 66th birthday approaches next month, I've been toying again with getting another Grail pen, 
and maybe finally getting myself a Mont Blanc, possibly a 146. If that happens, I know even without holding it or writing with it, that it could never surpass the feeling I have when I hold this work of art in my hands. I'm very lucky to have this pen. And I'm thankful to you folks who are watching and supporting my channel, as it would not be even close to being possible without your support. So thank you so much, Ink Acquiring Minds viewers, for your support and fellowship. It is much appreciated. I also wanted to send a shout out to Doug Vickery over at the Leonardo Facebook forum uh, for posting a photo of his Dutch pen show, Momento Zero Grande, which prompted me to get this astounding fountain pen of a lifetime. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And you can join as a member of my channel too, for only 99 cents a month, and I guarantee I will answer your comments in the comment section, and you'll get cool emojis and badges. Plus now I'm providing unboxing videos as I get new pens exclusively for members only. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching and that's all she wrote <laughs>